Good morning, everyone. It's 7.30. Uh, 7.30, uh, Friday of uh, another very uh, challenging week, challenging for many of us, uh, for many, uh, many people all over the country and all over the world. In our own little world, in the diocese, uh, 25 of our folks received word that they would be uh, furloughed beginning uh, May May 1st. So this next few days for them is going to be um, a difficult time. So I ask you to pray with them and pray for them. I would also ask, uh, we have created a web, part of our website, the diocese website, is a, a, a link that allows people to send in an email and uh, we're working on getting a phone, uh, a telephone number as well. Uh, for them to call asking for someone to pray with them. This is not a, a counseling line. It's not a um, an emergency line in the sense of um, people are in dire straits. This is an opportunity for people to ask for others to pray with them during this difficult time. We have now uh, more than 30 uh, deacons, deacons' wives, widows of deacons, religious women, um, in many languages, at least four different languages, Vietnamese, Korean, Spanish, and English. Um, and the people that ask, we will simply do that. We'll pray with them, um, give them the opportunity to uh, to bear their souls in a sense. So uh, for those of you that, are, uh, that may know someone, that, or if you yourself would like someone to pray with them, uh, by all means, check out the diocesan website. You know it's on sbdiocese dot org, and uh, click on that link and leave a word, leave word, and we'll have somebody contact you uh, to pray with you. And I know that I have had need uh, for prayer a great deal. Uh, some of what I've done today has not been easy. I've done today, I should say, this week has not been easy to give people difficult news. Um, and I don't, uh, I don't pretend in any way, shape, or form that what I'm going through is anything close to the difficulties others are facing. So I don't want to overemphasize that. Just to say that um, we are all in a in a difficult place. Those who are uh, pastors and supervisors are having to tell folks uh, in parishes, in our schools, and in our, in our diocese that uh, we can no longer afford to pay them. This is not who we are as a church. As a church, we, we, we want to welcome people. We want to find room. And right now we're saying there is no room. And uh, for me, that's contrary to who we are. But, you know, um, we ask God to guide us and perhaps show us a way. Uh, little Jesse and I did not walk yesterday because, as most of you know, it was close to 100 degrees or way over 90 anyway uh, in the afternoon and evening. So we're going to perhaps walk right after this morning prayer. And I know that up in the hills right now, the mustard flowers and many other different wildflowers are blooming. And that's wonderful. Uh, they are a sign of hope and a sign of life. Uh, we see um, little purple flowers and white flowers and yellow ones, and all kinds of different colors, and most of which we don't know. But I'm helping Jesse just to, to learn to recognize uh, things like thistles and uh, who can be there in the neighbor's yards and so forth. And he's, uh, he's, he's perhaps, I hope, catching a little of my love for, for God's creation, and he will appreciate it, and, and does now. He does now. He sees things. He'll pick up roly polies on the sidewalk and move them into the grass just to make sure they don't get lost on the road. And uh, we stop and watch ants at work. Uh, these things are things that you and I don't take time for. And so learning to see through the eyes of a child the wonder of God's creation is a great blessing. So I invite you to, if you don't have a child, uh, a grandchild, or spend time with them. If you can, spend time outside with them, at least before it heats up. Okay? I wish you a blessed day. Uh, however it plays out, 
and know that God is with you no matter what is going on in your life. Even when you feel most alone, God is right beside you. And so we pray, Lord, open my lips and my mouth will proclaim your praise. He is risen. Alleluia. The Lord is God, the mighty God, the great king over all the gods. He holds in his hands the depth of the earth and the highest mountains as well. He made the sea. It belongs to him. The dry land too, for it was formed by his hands. Come, let us bow down and worship, bending the knee before the Lord, our maker. For he is our God, and we are his people. The flock shepherds. Today, listen to the voice of the Lord. Do not go stubborn as your fathers did, when at Meribah and Massa they challenged me and provoked me, although they had seen all of my works. Forty years I endured their generation. I said they are. I said they are a people whose hearts go astray, and they do not know my ways. So I swore in my anger, they shall not enter into my rest. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord is risen. Alleluia. Psalm 51. Have courage, my child. Your sins are forgiven. Alleluia. This is a prayer for God to have mercy. Your inmost being must be renewed. You must put on the new man. Have mercy on me, O God, in your kindness. In your compassion, blot out my offense. O wash me more and more from my guilt and cleanse me from my sin. My offenses, truly I know them. My sin is always before me. Against you, you alone have I sinned. What is evil in your sight I have done that you may be justified when you give sentence and be without reproach when you judge. O oh, see, in guilt I was born, a sinner was I conceived. Indeed, you love truth in the heart. Then in the secret of my heart, teach me wisdom. O oh, purify me, then I shall be clean. O oh, wash me, I shall be whiter than snow. Make me here rejoicing and gladness that the bones you have crushed may revive. From my sins, turn away your face and blot out all my guilt. A pure heart create for me, O God. Put a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence, nor deprive me of your Holy Spirit. Give me again the joy of your help. With a spirit of fervor sustain me, that I may teach transgressors your ways, and sinners may return to you. O rescue me, God, my helper, and my tongue shall ring out your goodness. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall declare your praise. For in sacrifice you take no delight. A burnt offering from me you would refuse. My sacrifice, a contrite spirit, a humbled, contrite heart, you will not spurn. In your goodness, show favor to Zion. Rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. Then you will be pleased with lawful sacrifice, holocausts offered on your altar. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Let us pray. Father, he who knew no sin was made sin for us, to save us and restore us to your friendship. Look upon our contrite hearts and afflicted spirit, and heal our troubled conscience so that in the joy and strength of the Holy Spirit, we may proclaim your praise and glory before all the nations. Have courage, my child. Your sins are forgiven. Hallelujah. And now the canticle from Habakkuk. You go forth to save your people, to save your anointed one. Hallelujah. Lift up your heads. Your redemption is at hand. O Lord, I have heard your renown and feared, O Lord, your work. In the course of the years, revive it. In the course of the years, make it known. In your wrath, remember compassion. God comes from Tamar, the Holy One from Mount Paran. Covered are the heavens with his glory, and with his praise the earth is filled. 
his splendor spreads like the light. Rays shine forth from beside him, where his power is concealed. You come forth to save your people, to save your anointed one. You tread the sea with your steeds. Amid the churning of the deep waters, I hear, and my body quiver, trembles. At the sound, my lips quiver. Decay invades my bones. My legs tremble beneath me. I await the day of distress that will come upon the people who attack us. For though the fig tree blossom not, no fruit be on the vines, though the yield of the olive fail, and the terraces produce no nourishment, that the flocks disappear from the fold, and there be no herd in the stalls, yet will I rejoice in the Lord, and exult in my saving God. God, my Lord, is my strength. He makes my feet swift as those of hinds, and enables me to go upon the heights. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. You go forth to save your people, to save your anointed one. Alleluia. Zion, give praise to your God. He has brought peace to your borders. Alleluia. And now, Psalm 147, which speaks of the restoration of Jerusalem. <coughs> oh, praise the Lord, Jerusalem. Zion, praise your God. He has strengthened the bars of your gates. He has blessed the children within you. He has established peace on your borders. He feeds you with finest wheat. He sends out his word to the earth and swiftly runs his command. He showers down snow white as wool. He scatters hoarfrost like ashes. He hurls down hailstones like crumbs. The waters are frozen at his touch. He sends forth his word and it melts them. At the breath of his mouth, the waters flow. He makes his word known to Jacob, to Israel, his laws and decrees. He has not dealt thus with any other nations. He has not taught them his decrees. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, you established peace within the borders of Jerusalem. Give the fullness of peace to your faithful people. May peace rule us in this life and possess us in eternal life. You are about to fill us with the best of wheat. Grant that what we see dimly now as in a mirror, we may come to perceive clearly in the brightness of your truth. Sion, give praise to your God. He has brought peace to your borders. Alleluia. A reading is from the book of Acts. The God of our fathers has raised up Jesus, whom you put to death, hanging him on a tree. He whom God has exalted in his right hand as ruler and savior is to bring repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. We testify to this. So too does the Holy Spirit, whom God has given to those that obey him. And we are responsory. The Lord is risen from the tomb. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord is risen from the tomb. Alleluia, alleluia. He hung upon the cross for us. Alleluia, alleluia. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. The Lord is risen from the tomb. Alleluia, alleluia. Jesus took bread, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to those who were at table with him. Alleluia. And our canticle of Zechariah from Luke. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets he promised of old that he would save us from our enemies, from the hands of all who hate us. He promised to show mercy to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. This with the oath he swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. You, my child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. And the tender compassion of our God, dawn from an high shall break upon us, 
to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Jesus took bread, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to those who were at table with him. Alleluia. And our prayers of intercession. God the Father raised up Christ through the Spirit, and will also raise up our mortal bodies. Let us cry out to him, Lord, raise us to life through your Holy Spirit. Or a Holy Father, you accepted the Holocaust of your Son in raising him from the dead. Accept the offering we make today and lead us to eternal life. Lord, raise us to life through your Holy Spirit. Look with favor in all we do today, that it may be for your glory and the sanctification of the world. Lord, raise us to life through your Holy Spirit. May our work today not be in vain, but for the good of the whole world, and through it lead us to your kingdom. Lord, raise us to life through your Holy Spirit. Open our eyes today to recognize our brothers and sisters and our hearts to love them, so that we may love and serve each other. Lord, raise us to life through your Holy Spirit. We pray for all those who are hurting, for those who have died, and for all those who are in need of our prayer, that we may let them know that they are not alone. Lord, raise us to life through your Holy Spirit. And together let us pray in the words a blessed Savior gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Let us pray. Father, in your plan of salvation, your Son, Jesus Christ, accepted the cross and freed us from the power of the enemy. May we come to share the glory of his resurrection, for he lives and reigns with you and with the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. And so, my friends, I wish you a blessed Friday, a Friday in which perhaps you and I, remembering how Jesus broke bread and shared it, are in a position to where we could share a little of what we have. There's so many people in need. And I think it's very important. I think it's critical for us, for all of humanity, to understand the importance of sharing what we have so that those who have little or nothing do not go hungry. And so um, to whatever degree that you can, in prayer and in action, let's do what we can to help the others. The reading today was from the Acts of the Apostles. And I remember when I first heard about the Acts of the Apostles, the, uh, whoever the professor was says, uh, this is not the bright ideas or the good intentions of the Apostles. These are the actions. It's what they did. And that is how God wants us to be today, to do something. Pray by all means with a very sincere heart. Praise God. But then serve God's people. Because as you serve one another, you are indeed serving God. So the Lord be with you and with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you this day, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.